Does your aim sometimes look a bit like this? Well today I'm going to help you fix your aim whether you're on controller or mouse and keyboard. By the end of the video you're going to have a deep understanding of the mechanics of good aim and a game plan to be improving every single day. Let's get started with some easy steps to make sure you're set up to aim at your maximum potential. This stuff is low hanging fruit that you can quickly check to make sure that you're set up correctly and you'll instantly see some big improvements if you have any tweaks to make. First off, check your monitor's refresh rate in your video settings. You want that to be set at the maximum that your monitor or TV can support. If you're playing on the newer consoles, Destiny can support 120Hz in the Crucible and this can make a huge difference in your ability to aim well and react quickly in the game. Just be sure to check that your TV or monitor can actually output 120Hz if you want to use this option. For PC gamers, you need to check both your Windows settings as well as your in-game settings. In Windows, you want to be sure that your monitor's refresh rate is set to as high as it goes. Personally, I play at 240Hz. There's a bit of a diminishing return effect as the number gets bigger, but you can definitely feel a big difference when you go from a faster refresh rate down to a slower one. Also, be sure not to make that cardinal mistake that way too many new PC gamers make by plugging your monitor into your motherboard instead of your graphics card. This will cost you a ton of frames per second, and it's a really easy mistake to make if you're new to PC gaming. When you're back in game, look at your video settings and turn off VSync and then set your in-game FPS limit to as high as possible, or just turn off the cap entirely. If you're using a monitor with G-Sync enabled, you might want to cap it to 5 FPS below your monitor's maximum refresh rate, but I'll let you go down the Reddit rabbit hole on that topic by yourself. In game, there's a few settings that you really want to tweak to give yourself an immediate boost to your aiming potential. You definitely want to turn off motion blur. I don't know why this setting is turned on by default, but if you care at all about your aiming performance in game, it's a really bad setting which just makes your aim a lot worse. While you're at it, turn off film grain and chromatic aberration. You really don't need anything that's going to make it harder to see your opponents, so these settings can definitely be turned off. Field of view is more of a preference thing, and there's arguments for setting it either higher or lower with different benefits and drawbacks depending on what value you pick. But for me, I like to set it as high as possible so I can have the widest peripheral vision. If you're on PC, you have a few extra options to tweak here. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can turn on Reflex Low Latency Mode to either On or On plus Boost. I personally go for the version with Boost, but try out both settings and see what works best for you on your particular PC. For the remaining settings, you can go by feel, but if you want to be as competitive as possible and you don't have a NASA PC, then you should be ready to sacrifice some eye candy in favor of performance. Generally speaking, you'll find the best players out there using lower visual settings in exchange for higher frame rates for a reason. Okay, with our settings dialed in, let's talk about a very underrated detail when it comes to aiming well in any game. This is especially true in Destiny, and that would be knowing the gun that you're trying to aim with inside and out. There's three main things that I want you to pay attention to with regards to your weapon. The weapon category, its stats, and the intended ranges. The way you're supposed to aim a hand cannon is quite different from something like an SMG or an auto rifle. And if you don't adjust your playstyle to accommodate the weapon that you're actually using, even perfect aim won't necessarily help you in a fight. For any kind of automatic weapon or pulse rifle, it's very important for you to know your recoil pattern. Even if you're playing on a controller that has aim assist helping you to move that reticle around for you, you're still going to have a huge advantage if you're able to manage the recoil pattern of your weapon by tilting your thumbstick manually without purely relying on aim assist. The same thing applies to mouse and keyboard. There's no reticle friction here helping you to stay on target with a mouse and keyboard, so you're going to need to know exactly how much you need to pull down in order to get all of your shots to land on target. Destiny may not have the recoil intensity of a game like Counter-Strike or Call of Duty, but learning to manage the recoil of your particular weapon of choice will go a long way to improving your aim in a fight. There's a pretty easy way to practice this. Just load up any activity and then stand at a fixed distance and shoot into a wall. You can practice getting all of your shots into as tight of a group as possible. For example, with a pulse rifle, being able to consistently do this is the difference between landing a reliable clean 2 burst and having to re-peak for a third shot. Keep in mind that on controller, you're usually going to have some aim assist helping you to mitigate some of this recoil, and that won't be present when shooting against the wall, but it's still a good practice to be able to manage it yourself to improve your thumbstick control. If you're using a weapon which is more focused on dealing a lot of damage with every single bullet, say something like a hand cannon or a scout rifle, you're still going to want to learn your recoil pattern, but you also now have to learn shot pacing. What do I mean by this? Well, take a look at the background. Notice how in these clips, I'm able to land my three perfect headshots with a hand cannon, but the time in between the shots, I'm actually not perfectly on target. You can get away with this if you know the exact timing of your shots, and you're ready to flick back on target right before the recoil animation ends and you're able to fire another bullet. It's one of the big advantages of weapons that utilize a method of aiming called click timing, and we'll go over that a lot deeper later in the video. This also brings us to one of the biggest traps that new players fall into with these types of weapons. Just because you can fire at the maximum rate of fire doesn't mean that you necessarily should all of the time. 
If your own ability to microcorrect your aim between shots isn't fast enough to make those adjustments and actually land your shots, you'll often actually end up with a faster overall time to kill by just slowing down a little bit and making sure that you land your shots accurately instead of just spamming your weapon as fast as you can. Of course, ideally over time, you want to build up your aim to the point where you can fire at the maximum speed and still have really high accuracy, but if you're newer to PvP, don't feel bad about taking a little bit longer to actually aim those shots before you fire. When you look closely, there's actually a few advantages to pacing your shots. First of all, when firing at the maximum rate of fire, you have to deal with the full brunt of the recoil animation. It's not going to have enough time to settle back to its original position if you're shooting at maximum rate of fire. This means that you're going to be facing three new problems. Your weapon sight reticle won't be at the exact same location as when you first pull the trigger, which means you're going to have to make an adjustment for that recoil deviation. Plus, it's likely that the weapon model itself might be partially blocking the target, which makes it even more difficult to line up the next shot. And to top things off, weapons in Destiny have some inaccuracy that grows over time as you fire bullets really quickly. You can see this indicated in the game by how the weapon sight expands as you fire shots, and then shrinks back together when the weapon settles. When you're shooting bullets while the gun is in an inaccurate state, it's possible to miss shots that are otherwise perfectly aimed at the target. The aim assist is so strong in Destiny that the last point won't be experienced too often in PvP realistically, but it's still something to be mindful of whenever you're missing your shots. Look at the background gameplay here where on the left you can see me firing a hand cannon at full RPM, and then as you look to the right, I'm pacing my shots just a little bit slower. Notice how quickly the grouping of the bullets on the right wall gets so much tighter than the maximum speed firing over on the left. This means that when you're trying to learn how to aim a scout rifle, or in particular a hand cannon, you really want to take some time to make sure you pace those shots. Even going as slow as a clip on the right with 100% accuracy is still going to give you an overall faster time to kill than just missing one headshot while firing too fast like on the left. Let that sink in. Missing one headshot is worse than slowing down by this much. And this advice doesn't only apply to follow-up shots. Sometimes when I'm whiffing a lot of sniper shots in a trials card for example, I'll mentally force myself to start taking just that little extra moment to actually aim my crosshair before clicking, and it's amazing how much my accuracy improves by just not flicking as fast as possible and praying that the bullet magically connects with my target. It's definitely worth practicing those rapid flick shots for when the situation calls for it, but most of the time you're going to have better results by taking that extra moment to actually line up the shot before firing. This leads me to my next point, which is knowing your weapon's stats. You're probably expecting me to talk about the aim assist stat here, and of course that one's important and pretty well known, but the most you can really do about that one is just choosing a weapon with a high base aim assist stat, choosing some good perks that improve aim assist, and then equipping some targeting mods. So no, the stat I'm really interested in here is the recoil direction. This one's very underrated, especially for full auto weapons or pulse rifles. You want to have this stat be as close to vertical as possible. This is going to limit that side to side recoil action as your weapon fires bullets. If your gun is jumping all over the place both vertically and horizontally, you can be as skilled as you want in your raw aim, but the RNG of the recoil is certainly going to make you miss a lot more shots. If the recoil pattern is mostly vertical on the other hand, then you can just learn exactly how much you need to pull down your mouse or your thumbstick to get your shots in just about the same location every single time. For hand cannons, the recoil direction set isn't necessarily quite as important as full autos or pulse rifles, but I would still pay attention to it. If your recoil is not pretty vertical, make sure you take that extra time when pacing your shots to line them up properly. Of course, the stability stat is great for reducing how much recoil you experience overall and how much it settles back down, as well as mitigating some of that incoming flinch, and the handling stat is great for helping you get those weapon sights up a little bit faster, but I really think way too many people are sleeping on the recoil direction stat. Okay, to quickly wrap up the weapon stat section, the last thing I want you to pay attention to is range. And this isn't purely talking about the weapon range stat itself, but actually the entire category of a weapon that you're working with. If you want to be successful in PvP, you need to be mindful of the potential range that you're dealing with. Even if your aim is dead on with an SMG, if you're fighting at 50 meters away, you're probably not going to be very effective. My buddy Ascendant Nomad made an awesome infographic with all of the weapon types in Destiny 2 and their effective ranges in PvP. It's worth taking some time to study this. I'll link to his original Twitter thread in the description so you can check it out. Okay, now that we have our basic settings in check and a good idea of how our weapons react when you fire bullets, it's time to get down to some serious business. Let's talk about the mechanics of actually putting your reticle on the target as accurately as possible to land more kills. We're diving into the first real aiming concept here that I'm going to teach you and I want you to pay close attention. This is probably the most important building block of developing good aim regardless of whether you're playing on a controller or mouse and keyboard. In my eyes, it's one of the most obvious signals of skill and experience when I watch someone's gameplay, and frankly this applies to just about every FPS game on the market or any that you'll ever play in the future. The technique I'm talking about is called crosshair placement or pre-aiming. 
It's the idea that you should always keep your crosshair on the exact part of the map where it's most likely that you'll see an opponent show up next. In a sense, you should do most of the aiming work before your opponent ever even appears on your screen. The more you have to correct your aim by making an adjustment when you see an enemy, the more time you're wasting and the more likely your opponent is going to get the first shot off on you and probably win the duel. You may feel like you've heard this advice a million times before, but the reality is it's incredibly important and I want you to seriously take it to heart. If there's one aiming skill that will definitely make you much better, it would be this one. Whenever you're watching a lane, your crosshair needs to be on the exact location where an enemy might peek so that all you have to do is click or at very worst make a very tiny adjustment to get a free hit. It's a simple concept, but in practice there's so much nuance here that makes it really easy to learn but very difficult to master. If you're holding a lane, your crosshair needs to be in the exact position where an enemy's head might appear so that ideally, without even moving your aim at all, you can just headshot them instantly. But in a game like Destiny, you also have to predict how they might be moving. If you're anticipating a slide, you might need to aim a little bit lower to compensate for that, or if you hear a jump sound effect, you might need to aim up at the sky to be ready for that verticality. Also, it's best to give yourself a little bit of breathing room to compensate for your reaction speed. Unless you're literally an aimbot, it's going to take you around 200 milliseconds to react once you see an enemy pop up on your screen, so it's usually a good idea to hold that angle a little bit away from the very edge of the cover. This is because you're probably not fast enough to react to that very first frame when you see an enemy on your screen. I'm going to draw your attention to a clip in the background that illustrates this point perfectly. This is me playing Counter-Strike a few months ago and checking an angle for enemies. I can hear footsteps in the background so I know someone's coming, but I'm not sure exactly how quickly they're going to show up on my screen. Watch how I pre-aim the doorway to kill the opponent. My reticle is not glued on the doorframe itself. Instead, it's held just enough distance away that by the time my brain reacts and sees the player, all I need to do is click to get the free kill. This applies to every FPS game that you will ever play, and if you master the skill and don't apply a single other tip from this video, I promise you will be amazed at how much you improve at FPS games. Okay, so that covers what to do before you see an enemy to give yourself a good chance at the kill, but what happens when the enemy is already on your screen? Well, let's talk about the three main mechanics of aiming and how to practice each of these concepts in-game. You can divide the skills of aiming in FPS games down to three basic mechanics. Timing your clicks, continuous tracking of a moving target, and switching between targets. Some weapons utilize one mechanic more than others. Like for example, a hand cannon will reward your click timing more than an SMG, which relies more on your ability to track a target. But as you improve each of these skills, they will work synergistically together to improve your overall aiming abilities as a player. I'm going to explain how each of these skills apply to Destiny specifically and then also give you some unique ways to practice. As a bonus, I made something special for you to pair with this video. Let me tell you with first-hand experience that not all aim training routines are created equally. I used to waste a lot of my time working on scenarios that didn't represent realistic engagements in gameplay. In fact, I'd say that way too many of the popular scenarios out there are essentially a big waste of time if you want to get better at actual FPS games. And I don't want you to waste your time. So I worked with my friend Minigod from the Voltaic Aim Training Community to make a free Aim Labs training routine to dial in each of these skills with routines that mimic scenarios you'd actually come across in Destiny. It's linked in the description if you want to give it a try. Minigod is one of the top rated Aim Labs players in the world and consistently puts up number one ranked scores in popular aiming scenarios. Whether you're on mouse and keyboard or controller, I think these scenarios could really help you out. And even if you're primarily a console player, if you have access to a PC or a laptop, Aim Labs is free to download and you can basically run it on a potato so it might be something to look into. But don't worry, I'll also give you some ways to work on these skills directly in Destiny in case external aim training isn't realistic for you right now. Okay, let's talk about click timing. You might also hear people talking about flicking and referring to this as the same concept, although I would argue that's more of a subset of click timing as an overall skill. In a nutshell, this is the ability to take your crosshair from wherever it might be at the moment and place it on the target as quickly and accurately as possible. This type of aiming is most helpful with weapons like hand cannons, scout rifles, bows, and sniper rifles. But don't be fooled, even if you only like to use automatic weapons, your ability to quickly put your crosshair on the target before starting to trace them is still incredibly important and it will improve your overall average time to kill. There's a number of classic aim training scenarios to work on the style of aiming, and there's benefits to working on a mix of the bigger targets for speed and smaller targets for precision. Also, in a good training routine, you should be doing a mix of scenarios that focus on aiming at static targets and scenarios where the targets are moving around. You'll hear these being referred to as static and dynamic click timing if you go a little bit further into the aim training subculture. It's also important to work on flicking towards targets at different heights compared to your current crosshair position. In Destiny, you're going to have players jumping, crouching, and sliding around, so you want to be training scenarios that force you to develop solid vertical aiming abilities. 
Most aim training that you'll do will have you practicing in a field of view that feels like you're hip firing in game, and that generally translates to all aiming skill sets pretty well. But specifically for sniping, I think it's also useful to practice aiming when it feels like you're zoomed in for a more narrow FOV. So we do have a few scenarios in the routine that utilize a sniper scope and aim at targets that like to wiggle around a little bit to make them more challenging. You also want to be able to react to enemies who appear on your screen suddenly. Like I mentioned earlier, ideally you want to have perfect crosshair placement all of the time, but sometimes that's just not going to happen. So we included some scenarios that will help you practice against targets that peek out from behind cover, and you'll have some timing pressure where you need to hit them in a brief period of time. In game, one of the best ways to specifically work on this type of aiming is to jump over into some PvE modes or even just an empty crucible match and practice making small flicks to various objects and getting really good at landing exactly on that object before you shoot. You can work on making small flicks and then big flicks and work on developing this crosshair movement at faster speeds. Keep in mind that if you're on controller, the reticle friction from aim assist will slightly adjust how much you actually need to move your crosshair on real targets to cover those same distances, but what's really more important here is developing your ability to tightly control your thumbstick. So what happens when you're using a weapon that doesn't fire single bullets like a hand cannon, but instead fires a stream of bullets like an SMG, auto rifle, or trace rifle? Then you're going to need to work on your tracking aim. This is the ability to keep your reticle glued onto a target as closely as possible while it changes directions. Don't be misled though, your ability to track targets well isn't only useful for these automatic weapons. The better your tracking aim becomes, the less of a correction you'll need to make with your more traditional click timing weapons. This is especially true when trying to pick off targets that are airborne. Tracking aim fundamentally breaks down into two subcategories, precision and reactivity, and they are both important to train. Precision is how accurately you can track a target that's not currently changing directions. The smaller the target, the more precise you need to be with your tracking skill to stay glued perfectly onto that target. In Destiny, many weapons greatly benefit from dialing in your ability to be precise with your tracking. The perk Target Lock became a huge point of discussion in higher end PvP circles because of how much advantage it provided when not missing shots while tracking weapons. Cold Heart also ramps up its damage when staying on target, which is really fun and an awesome way to practice and be rewarded for improving this skill. Reactivity is how quickly you can get back on target after it changes directions. If you're facing players who are really good at strafing in duels, your reactivity skill will really be put to the challenge, and developing this aiming skill will help you improve rapidly in these duels. Anytime you're working on tracking a target, you want to make your motion as smooth as possible. This helps you stay on target more consistently and requires smaller corrections when the target changes directions. Being really smooth while practicing your tracking aim can also help you develop your reading skills when it comes to movement in game. The faster you can mentally latch onto the movement patterns of an enemy, the better you'll be able to aim onto them and get a kill. We have several great tracking scenarios in the Aim Labs routine that will help you work on your tracking skills and smoothness in many different situations that are going to mimic fights you'll actually encounter in Destiny. I grew up playing games like Counter-Strike that develop click timing much more than tracking, so I felt a little bit behind when I got into the aim training world a few years ago. But I'll tell you that consistently working on this type of aim has provided me maybe the most noticeable benefits to my overall aiming abilities in any different type of FPS game I play. I really wish I would have started training like this years earlier and I'd encourage you to spend some serious time on your tracking abilities if you plan to keep playing FPS games for a long time. One of my favorite ways to work on my tracking aim in Destiny doesn't even require any aim training programs or even any enemies for that matter. Whenever I'm waiting on my friends to start up a raid encounter, I like to track them as accurately as I can while they're randomly moving around the map in the PvE arena. Of course, you can do the same idea with random players you encounter in the open world PvE areas as well. This goes along with my personal gaming motto, ABAT, always be aim training. Seriously, you can get a lot of practice time in even when you're just doing your regular Destiny chores. The third major category of aiming is target switching. You can kind of think of target switching as a combination of both of these aiming skill sets put together. It's the ability to finish one kill and then move on to your next target as quickly as possible and smoothly track them until you get the follow-up kill. Out of all the types of aiming scenarios that I've practiced in my life, this is maybe the most noticeable that it's actually translated directly to in-game situations immediately. I have so many clips I've saved over the years of using a weapon like the Suros Regime where I track one enemy and then flick as fast as possible to the next enemy and continue that tracking aiming to melt the second player. It's some of the most satisfying gameplay aspects for PvP for me, and I'd really encourage you to spend some serious time training it. We have a few great scenarios in the Aim Labs routine to focus on that flick to track skill that's so crucial for getting good at FPS games. This is another skill you can practice in PvE just like your tracking ability. Follow a friend's head around for a moment and then swap to another one quickly and trace it and then swap back. In PvP, you'll also need to develop a really good sense of your weapon's time to kill so that you can know exactly when you need to swap to the next target without waiting for confirmation on the first kill. It's a skill that you'll develop over time and it's so satisfying to get good at. 
When it comes to improving your aim, you can make huge improvements completely for free just by working on these mechanics. But if I'm being honest, some parts of it can also feel a little bit like pay to win, at least when it comes to your setup. The reality is that hardware can give you a huge leg up. It's not going to give you any free wins, but if you're setting up two equally skilled gamers in a 1v1 and you give one of them a really cheap setup and the other one some really high-end gaming gear, I'm going to put my money on the better setup if everything else is equal. Having a faster monitor refresh rate or a faster PC that can output higher frame rate is definitely an advantage in my eyes. Reducing your input lag can make a huge difference in your ability to execute the aiming mechanics from the previous sections. But the gear that you use for aiming specifically can also make a huge difference. For controller players, I think having a controller with some form of back pedals is a huge advantage. There are tons of great ones on the market these days, but the idea is that you can use these back pedals to map your actions in the game like jumping or crouching so that your thumbs never have to leave the thumbsticks. This allows you to move around in complete freedom while still being in total control of your aim at all times. If you're short on cash and buying a new controller isn't in the cards right now, then you can also look up some other methods of doing this, like setting up your controller with a bumper jumper type setup, or using some different ways to hold your controller like a claw grip. But in my own experience, using a controller with back paddles is so much easier and more effective. When it comes to sensitivity, I've noticed that most of the best controller aimers that I know seem to prefer running a higher hip fire sensitivity and a lower aimed on sight sensitivity. This gives them the best of both worlds, speed to turn around quickly and precision for hitting your ADS shots. When it comes to mouse and keyboard, the options are even crazier. First off, many players are using a sensitivity that is way too fast for them to control. I don't know why game devs like to ship games with such crazy high sensitivity levels, but I can tell you that almost every solid mouse and keyboard player that you'll see online isn't playing nearly as high of a sensitivity as that. I'd recommend a starting point somewhere around 800 dpi on your mouse and about 5 sensitivity in game, and then go up or down from there based on your own personal preferences. But just because your gaming mouse advertises that it can go up to 12,000 dpi doesn't mean that you should use it. If you're newer to PC gaming or you just got a new computer, make sure that your mouse acceleration is turned off in Windows. You'll find this in the Windows mouse settings with an option called Enhanced Pointer Precision. You want to make sure that this box is unchecked. While you're in there, also be sure to set your pointer speed in the middle to 6 out of 11 which should be the default. I've found over the years after using dozens and dozens of different mice that I tend to aim a little bit better as the mice get lighter. With less weight, the mouse starts to feel more like an extension of your hand and allows you to make those little microcorrections a lot easier. The way you actually grip or hold your mouse is also a matter of personal preference, but I do feel like my aim has improved a little bit over time while switching away from a palm grip where the majority of my hand was resting on the mouse towards more of a fingertips grip where only my fingers are making contact with the mouse. This way, my fingers have more ability to directly control the mouse since less of my hand is connected to the mouse. This is made even easier by using a lighter weight mouse, which allows for more fine adjustment with just the fingers. The latency of the mouse clicks also plays a big factor when determining who wins a fight, so do your research and choose a mouse that fits your budget while still giving you the best chance to aim well. The same goes for the surface that your mouse actually sits on. It's crazy to me how many setups I see where people either don't use a mouse pad at all, or they just use some cheap one that came with their computer. Almost two years ago now, I started a project taking my favorite parts of all the best mouse pads on the market and combining all the things I liked about each of them into one super pad. The result was a company that I started called Ember Edge. And I'm obviously biased here, but I really believe that we have the best mouse pad you can buy for games like Destiny that require a mix of all of these different styles of aiming. Our pad has a hybrid surface which gives you a great mix of speed for flicking quickly and tracking smoothly, while also having enough stopping power to land on your target accurately and hit those shots. The stitching on the edges is designed to be the same exact height as the pad surface so you never hit a bump that's going to stop your mouse even at the edges of the pad. And the backing material is so soft that you can press into it for a little bit of extra friction when it's needed, and it's also really comfortable on your skin when you're playing or working for long hours. Plus it's shipped in a flat packed box so it's ready to use instantly and it doesn't require any time to flatten out like most of those rolled pads that you'll find. If you want to try one out for yourself, we're doing a special promotion for the holidays where you can save $5. Just go to emberedge.com and use code HOLIDAY. Up next, check out a video that I made with my friend Apathetic who's one of the best PvP players that I know. He gave a ton of great tips about how his brain works when he's playing PvP and it's full of gold nuggets of wisdom. It's linked on screen and in the description.